Welcome back to Winnie to Talk, where today we're reacting to some predictions. Ugh. You know the score by now. I'm going to be looking back at our pre-season predictions here on Football Daily and giving my immediate reaction. We've got two videos to go through. We've got my full 1 to 20 for the first time in We Need to Talk history. That'll be ugly. And we've got Sunday Vibes' alternative predictions. Let's get into it. I'm not going to go through what I said about every team because we'll literally be here all day. So I'll pick out and try and find some bits that I think are good shouts, terrible shouts, or maybe just hilarious shouts. A 20th, Bournemouth. Now I can give it all the big hoorah about, oh, I'm not going to be basing this on transfers, but Bournemouth just haven't done enough. They haven't done enough. Great start. Great start, isn't it? Now this is obviously the clip that Bournemouth, the club, took put out on social media to hammer me and about 25 other creators. And fair enough. In 18th position, it was so tight. I really wanted to put Everton there. I think they are going to have a horrendous season. But I've ended up going with Fulham, who I actually think have recruited pretty well. I think Marco Silva is a really good manager for them. <laughs> it's classic Joe Tomlinson predictions, talking about they've recruited well, great manager, and then just completely contradict myself, put them in the bottom three. Brilliant stuff. Although, I have obviously got Everton in 17th, which is already one out of four. <laughs> Dominic Cavalier is out, what, eight weeks, I believe. Richarlison's been sold. Where are the goals coming from for Everton? Who scores their goals? Nobody scores their goals. I got this one spot on, it has to be said. But so did pretty much everybody. This isn't a huge W saying that Everton were going to be in amongst the relegation battle. They are pretty much every season at the moment and nobody was going to score their goals. Richarlison walked out of the club or was sold. Dominic Cavalier constantly injured and they signed Neil Mopé who didn't hit the ground running. This was an obvious one, but you know, there's so few correct in here. I've got to shout out some of the good ones too. It's a young team. Tino Livermento is out long term. Hassan Hurtle has to be careful this year, Mav. He really does. Another manager I think has to be careful this year is Bruno Larger. Well, both of those managers got sacked, so I'm doing something right. Southampton's recruitment didn't work. I wasn't exactly right. In fact, there was five places out with where they would finish, but I did I did see them having a bad season. The same with Wolves, who, again, a lot of people predicted to have a big downturn, but at least I kind of got Bruno Larger and Hassan Hutl's struggles roughly correct, I guess. Let's move well up the table now, see what we're saying about Leicester, because they massively underperformed. Did I predict it? I don't think they're ever going to be in trouble with this squad. I think Brendan Rodgers is good enough to you know, keep him 12th and above. But I think they are going to take another step back on last year. They've just got to be careful they don't stagnate too much. Because, you know, we've seen the much... Oh, I don't think they're ever going to be in trouble. Oh, Come on, man. Is it one win in 13 now or two wins in 12? Something like that for Steven Gerrard. And those came against Burnley and Norwich. I think the pressure will start to ramp up on him. The more those sort of memes come out about him having the same win percentage as Gary Neville at Valencia, the pressure could build on him. But I think even if the pressure built on him so much and he was to lose his job, I think the Aston Villa squad as a whole is very, very solid. And Hey, this one's not too bad. Kind of predicting Steven Gerrard... Might be enough under pressure to lose his job and that the Aston Villa squad is still very good. Obviously, he lost his job. The Villa squad proved to be very good. Hired a top-level coach and shot up the table to seventh. So I'm a little bit out in terms of my position in the league table. But my sentiment here, it's not terrible. It's not that bad. It's certainly better than the Leicester shout. I think Brighton are going to be absolutely fine. I think Greg Potter's one of the best coaches in the division. And they're a very solid mid-table mid table side. Wouldn't be surprised to see them jump up to like seven. Well, they jumped up to six. Graham Potter replaced by De Zerbi, who did a better job than him. But again, not a terrible prediction. Why didn't I just say Brighton seventh? Then I would have just been one out rather than here, four out. Eighth place, we've got West Ham. I think uh, them versus Newcastle was a real toss of a coin as well. West Ham squad, in my opinion, is superior. <laughs> Why? Why? Well, 
Well, that's the worst shout of the day. Surely there's not going to be a worse shout in this episode than that. West Ham squad is superior to Newcastle's. And I think Eric Ten Hag's going to face a lot of those similar problems. So wouldn't surprise me at all if United finished 8th or 9th. Why? First of all, thank you, Eric Ten Hag. Thank you for disproving me totally. But saying that United would be close to the Palace than the top four, that just stinks. And I think Thomas Tuchel painted a pretty unhappy picture on the touchline. I still don't see where the goals come from for Chelsea. I think Raheem Sterling's probably going to contribute 10. Mason Mount's probably going to contribute 10 plus. They didn't, but the goals never came for Chelsea. It was their biggest problem all season. They could not score to save their lives. And I'm talking about Thomas Tuchel painting an unhappy picture on the sidelines in pre-season. Again, he ended up leaving the club. So not terrible, but just way too positive about Chelsea. Way too positive. The biggest underachievers in Premier League history this season. Shambolic. Absolutely shambolic. Third, I think, is going to be Spurs. They've got, for me, the best attacking triumvirate outside of... I mean, maybe in the... They might have the best attacking trio in the league. Just because... The best attacking trio in the league, is it? How is it the best attacking trio in the league? Lord help me. Lord help me. In second, I've got Liverpool. I still think they're going to be extremely close to Manchester City. I've seen a lot of people in their previous having Spurs above them or saying that Liverpool are going to finish 10 to 15 points by City. I just don't see it. Jürgen Klopp has proven time and time again he's able to get out there and match Manchester City's output. God, I'm just so confident. I'm just like so, so arrogant with the Liverpool prediction. I don't see it. Tend to, I don't see it. Well, you should have seen it. You should have seen it because they ended up finishing about 20 to 30 points off of Manchester City. Why didn't you just see it? So I've gone for Liverpool in second and Manchester City winning the league. Erling Haaland is going to be a freak. He is going to score 200 goals this season. Jack Grealish, although he didn't play particularly well against West Ham, I still think he's in for a big season too. And now, you know, Man City win the league was an obvious shout. Haaland scoring 1,000 goals was an obvious shout. But the Grealish remontada, you know, give me something, please. Just give me something. Looking at this 1-20, to 20, I think Everton in 17th is the only one I got right. So give me something, please. Let's move on to the Sunday Vibes, lads, where I really hope they perform better than me. Now, they did their alternative predictions, so they've got a number of different categories, starting with the sack race. Weirdly, like, I do think Frank Lampard is a bit of danger. Um, having said that, I do think we maybe didn't give him enough credit towards the end of last season, where he did kind of switch up Everton's style of play. They did become a bit more conservative, a little bit more relegation battle Oh... I think he made it to January, so he didn't win the sack race. But it's not the worst shout, Mikey. I want to give some props to the boys here because I already know there are some absolutely horrendous shouts coming. Like some of the worst predictions maybe in Football Daily history coming up. So stay tuned for them. Who's Jalab got in here? Yeah, Marco Silva was the kind of guy that I was thinking about. Um, and maybe less so him getting sacked, more him maybe walking. <laughs> No, I love Jalav. I love Jalav. Marco Silva to resign. First, <laughs> first manager out to resign. Whoosh. Now, I think this is off the back of the summer business, obviously, wasn't it? But, you know, outside contender, maybe an outside, outside contender, like seventh choice potentially for manager of the season. Fulham biggest overachievers. Now, nah, that's a hilarious shout, man. Marco Silva to win the sack race. Not the worst of the time, but it stinks now. As for, for someone like Eddie Howe, I think that is also an interesting shout. Uh, if things don't go according to plan for the first maybe 10, 12 games of the season. Eddie Howe, first manager to be sacked if things don't go to plan. Eddie Howe, manager of the season for me. Eddie Howe, first manager to be sacked. It's a contender for the worst shout of the day. Zachary. Zachary. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Moving on to the biggest overachievers then. Who are the boys predicting will overachieve this season? I think if you'd asked me this uh, 
at the very end of the championship season, I would have said Fulham. Like, I really like... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Zach's got overachievers as Fulham. First manager sacked as Marco Silva. No correlation, Jalab. There's no correlation. I've also put Southampton down. You know, I mean, I know they, the last couple of seasons, the last and all, they've started the campaign really well. I remember we did an explain video where we were, I think they were at ninth place at the time and they were pushing the teams above them and looked in group. <sighs> Southampton overachievers. <sighs> no wonder he's joined the Athletic. <laughs> From overachievers to underperformers, we've scooted forward a little bit in the video. Any decent shouts in this one? But like Arsenal and Spurs have improved yeah. so much. And I think if Chelsea if Chelsea go for a bad patch, which they always do, they always go for a month where things aren't going their way. Um, I think that that could really, really affect them. But Oh, well done, Zach, man. Well done. Going against his own club allegiance, I don't think he predicted them to have quite as much of an underperformance, but let's have it right. It was the biggest underperformance in Premier League history. Hard to predict that. I think this is a good shout. Most improved player of the season. I think there could be some good shouts, hopefully, in this one. What's Christopher Hamill got to say? Daddy, Daddy, Ali. Does anyone back him to become a Premier League force oh, again? That would be a big shout. Um, <laughs> No, stop the video. Stop the video right now. Burn the video, delete it. Christopher Hamill's gone Delhi Alley, most improved player 2022 2023. Delhi Alley. You're welcome to him, The Athletic. You're welcome to him. Clip this one out, send it to him. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I'm going for Marcus Rashford. Okay. okay. Uh, it's a bit of a shout. Like, it could end up that he only gets like six goals at the end of the end of the season, and, and Joe's just you know taking the mick out of me. But like, I'm, I'm hoping to see him with Eric Ten Hag the revival of Marcus Rashford because we have seen it before. Like, I remember this season two and three years ago, um, whilst he was carrying the back injury, he was literally carrying Manchester United. And he carried Manchester United again. Zach Jalab for the most improved Marcus Rashford. Brilliant shout. Probably the best shout of the day. Potentially. I don't think everybody saw this one coming. I think a few people would have said that he's going to score more goals, but I don't think anybody would have said he's going to hit 30 goals for the season, be the Premier League's most improved player. This is a great shout by Zach Jalab. Give him his flowers, ladies and gentlemen. Give him his flowers. We're moving on now to the best signing of the season, where I specifically remember one whiff when I was watching this one. Let's find it. And in that sense... Yeah, you're looking at some of maybe Forest signings. You, you're thinking it's high risk that Jesse Lingard gets 10 goal contributions and, and keeps Forest up. Is that going to be signing of the season despite everyone maligning how much he's paid? Chris predicting Jesse Lingard to be signing of the season. He's had a bad, bad half an hour here, Hamster. A bad half an hour. Oh, you don't love to see it, but it is hilarious. What? Haaland exists, boys. Haaland exists. There's a few other predictions in there. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. But generally, I wanted to pull out one more from Christopher Hamill because you know I've hammered him for Lingard and Ali, rightly so. But this one, I think, is pretty decent. I'm going to go City Champions League because of Haaland. Uh, you're right, it is boring. And Europa League, I mean, I might just say Sevilla. Oh, I went A in the Champions League. Champions League. Oh, my, I backed them to get knocked out. <laughs> the group to the Champions yeah, yeah, yeah. League. Last 32, go on to win it just because, like, uh, I don't have any stronger foundation than that. Your foundations are fine. Exactly that happened. City potentially winning the Champions League. And Sevilla went out of the Champions League. 32, went on to win it against Roma this week. Hamill, you might have had a couple of diabolical ones, but that one you nailed. Okay, so that was my reaction to some of the best and worst predictions from Football Daily's pre-season shouts. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. It's an extremely humbling video to shoot. Hit subscribe as well if you're new to Football Daily. Of course, we'll be doing another one of these at the start of next season. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.